Hello students, we are dealing the chapter wave optics and we dealt on the topic Young's double slit experiment and in Young's double slit experiment we calculated some of the parameters involved such as the distance of nth fringe <coughs> from the central fringe which corresponds to maximum as well as minima and we also try to learn the formation of fringes when two coherent sources superimpose, superimposes with each other due to that we get bright and dark bands. Bright and dark bands are completely distinguishable that is a bright fringe is completely bright and dark fringe is completely dark. So, in that case we determine the distance of nth maxima as well as nth minima from the central fringe and also we learned that the central fringe which is obtained in this case is bright fringe it is due to the reason that all the wave fronts that arises from source S1 as well as S2 travels equal path that is reaching at point O where the central fringe is formed. Because of that equal path the path difference between the waves becomes equal to 0 because of that path difference which is equal to 0 we get central maximum. Then we calculated distance of nth as well as uh, nth fringes corresponding to maxima and minima. Now we will try to find out the width of the fringes. Here distance of nth fringe on uh, our previous class which is calculated for maxima is given by xn is equal to n lambda d divided by d where lambda is wavelength d is the distance between slit as well as screen small d is the separation between two slits that is uh, you can say it as a slit width. Now distance of n minus 1 fringe in place of n is to be replaced with n minus 1 fringe. So from the figure uh, it will be clear that nth, nth fringe corresponds to I mean the distance of nth fringe corresponds from 0 to I mean the central fringe to the nth fringe is xn which is calculated as n lambda d by d. Distance of n minus 1 fringe that is just uh, previous bright fringe uh, from the nth bright fringe is n minus 1. When we subtract this two distance we get a fringe width of dark fringe that lies between two bright fringes. So, when we subtract these two that is uh, xn minus xn minus 1 we get the fringe width of dark fringe. Let us try to calculate that. So, here the linear fringe width is given by linear fringe width beta is equal to x n minus x n minus 1 is the linear fringe width. So, x n we already have here which is given by beta is equal to n lambda d divided by small d minus in place of x n minus 1 we can put n minus 1 bracket lambda d divided by d. So, here we can write n minus 1 lambda d divided by d. From this equation we can take lambda d by d as a common factor taking that uh, the fringe width comes out to be lambda d divided by d bracket close n minus n minus 1 under bracket bracket close square bracket close. Here further uh, expansion of this gives lambda d by small d n take out the two terms from the bracket uh, we get minus n plus 1 n n get cancelled out finally we get the fringe width of uh, dark fringe as lambda d by d. So the fringe width that is the linear fringe width of dark fringe is comes out to be beta equal to lambda d by d. Fringe width depends upon uh, lambda as well as distance between the separation and the slit width d. So, fringe width increases with wavelength that is if instead of monochromatic light if we use white light the wavelength for white light consists of uh, 7 colors for violet light wavelength is less therefore the fringe width for violet light comes out to be small compared to the fringe width of red light uh, keeping small d and capital D as same. Now, it also depends upon D that is with the uh, increase of uh, separation between slit as well as screen the fringe width which is obtained on the screen will be larger and at the same time by decreasing the slit separation we can increase the fringe width. 
So, when we keep fringe width, I mean if we keep the separation as larger, the fringe width becomes smaller. Under that case, what will happen? Bright and dark bands uh, becomes thin, I mean the fringe width will be smaller, uh, so that we cannot able to distinguish the bright and dark bands. As a result of that, continuous illumination will be there and we cannot able to uh, identify the interference pattern. So, that is why the value of D should always be kept low in order to uh, get the fringe width as a appreciable width. Now, we will try to find out the fringe width of uh, uh, bright fringe. In order to find out the fringe width of bright fringe, you have to take two consecutive dark fringes and you have to find the distance of two consecutive dark fringes from the central fringe and after that you have to subtract these two in order to get the fringe width of the fringe which lies between the two fringes. So, here we are interested to find out the fringe width of uh, bright fringe. So, in order to find out the fringe width of bright fringe, I am taking the distance of nth minima as well as distance of nth n minus 1 minima. Here the distance of nth minima we already calculated in our uh, previous class is given by xn is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda d divided by d. Distance of n minus 1th fringe is given by 2n minus 1 plus 1 lambda d by d. So, we will try to find out distance of nth I mean uh, we will try to find out the fringe width of uh, bright fringe here. So, fringe width of bright fringe linear fringe width of bright, bright fringe beta is given by xn minus xn minus 1. Here the distance of uh, nth minima is given by 2n plus 1 lambda d by d. So, we will put here 2n plus 1 lambda d divided by 2d. minus bracket 2n minus 1 plus 1 multiplied by lambda d divided by 2d bracket close. Here also we can take lambda d by 2d as a common factor. So, take that uh, lambda d by 2d as common factor. Inside the bracket you have 2n plus 1 minus in the square bracket you have 2 n minus 1 plus 1. So, multiply this 2 n minus 2 plus 1 bracket close square bracket close. So, here finally, we have a lambda d divided by 2 d. Take out the terms which are present inside the bracket or uh, we get minus 2 n then minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 and when we take this minus 1 out of the bracket we get plus 1. So, 2 n 2 n get cancelled. In the next step you have lambda d divided by 2d bracket close 1 plus 1 is 2 and this 2 to get cancelled out. So, the linear fringe width of bright fringes comes out to be lambda d by d. So, in the previous case also we saw that the fringe width of uh, dark fringes comes out to be lambda d by d. So, it means that in the case of interference all the fringes will have same fringe width and that is given by lambda d by d and the central fringe also will have the fringe width of beta is equal to lambda d by d. So, all the fringes in the case of interference will be of same width uh, which is given by lambda d divided by d. So, this fringe width depends upon lambda as well as d and small d which we already discussed earlier. Now, we will try to find out the angular fringe width of uh, fringes. Angular fringe width means the angle to which their consecutive fringes inclined when we subtract these two angles from the center we will get angular fringe width of the fringe. I mean the fringe whether it is dark or bright what angle it forms at point x is said to be as angular fringe width. Now, we will try to find out the angular fringe width here. From the figure t theta 1 is equal to I mean uh, using trigonometry you have tan theta 1 equal to x 
n minus 1 divided by capital D. If theta is very small, then tan theta can be written as theta 1. Theta 1 is equal to x n minus 1 divided by D. Similarly, the angular spread of nest maxima is given by theta 2 is equal to x n divided by D. So, the difference between the angular spread of two consecutive maximas gives the angular width of the minima which lies between two maximas. So, width of angular width of angular width of minima is theta is equal to theta 2 minus theta 1. So, here we have theta is equal to the value of theta 2 we already have here which is x n divided by d. So, this can be written as x n divided by d minus and the value of theta 1 is x n minus 1 divided by d. So, here uh, you can take common factor d as a common denominator we get x n minus x n minus 1 divided by d. And we already calculated that x n minus x n minus 1 is nothing but it is the fringe width either it is dark or bright the fringe width remains same. Therefore, for x n minus x n minus 1 you can take linear fringe width. So, it is linear fringe width beta. So, the angular fringe width this comes out to be linear fringe width divided by the separation between slit and screen. Now, the value of beta we already calculated which is lambda capital D divided by small d here already d is there this d d get cancelled out. So, the angular width of the fringe is comes out to be lambda by d. So, again angular width will also depends upon wavelength as well as the slit width. So, angular width increases with the decrease of slit width and it increases with the increase of wavelength. So, we completed the uh, calculation of fringe width and angular width etc. in the case of Hanks double slit experiment. Now, we will try to discuss or we will uh, reach the conclusion and we will treat this we will see the conclusion in this case. First, the condition for maxima in the case of interference is given by n lambda uh, that means for the case of uh, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, lambda etc. we will get maximas and the condition for minima is 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 that means for odd integral multiples I mean half of odd integral multiples we get minimas that is for 3 lambda by 2, 5 lambda by 2, 7 lambda by 2 likewise. Distance of nth maxima here calculated as n lambda d divided by small d. Distance of nth minima is equal to 2 n minus 1 lambda d by 2 d. Now, linear fringe width that means the fringe width of all the fringes in the case of uh, interference remains same that is given by b is equal to lambda d by d angular fringe width is given by theta is equal to lambda d by d. Now, d should always be kept small if d is large then the fringe width comes out to be smaller as a result of that all the fringes overlaps with each other because of that we will get continuous illumination we cannot able to distinguish the bright and dark fringes. So, D should be kept low. Two monochromatic coherent sources are taken in order to produce the interference. In the case of Hanks double slit experiment, the dark fringe is completely dark that is dark fringe is dark fringe is completely dark and bright fringe is completely bright. And distance of nth fringes uh, already we calculated all the things. So, these are the situation here when we use colored light that is when you use white light we get central white band that is central white band with white light followed by 
color fringes that means nearer to central white band we will get violet band followed by webgear colors that is violet indigo blue green yellow and orange etc the fringe width as we saw depends upon lambda therefore the fringe which is obtained nearer to the central fringe for the case of uh, white light will be of low fringe width because the wavelength of violet color is small as we go upper side the fringe width for red light is more compared to the fringe width of all other fringes if we use white light normally in the case of young's double slit experiment two monochromatic sources are taken and that two monochromatic source must be coherent so as to get completely bright and dark bands which can be distinguishable so using young's double slit experiment after calculation of beta wavelength lambda can be calculated by noting d as well as small d so in the case of uh, young's double slit experiment interference of wave fronts that arises from two different sources superimposes with each other that means the wave front arise from the first source and the wave front arise from the second source get superimposes and due to this superimposition redistribution of energy takes place and we get consecutive bright and dark bands slit width is always kept low if the slit width that means uh, slit hole i mean to say the aperture size of the slit is to be kept low compared to slit width if the aperture size of the slit is more then what will happen a slit whose aperture size is more may be assumed of consisting of several disturbing points which produces their own wavelets and that wavelets will also superimposes with each other in addition to interference we will get diffraction pattern also next we will see the intensity distribution in the case of uh, young's double slit experiment here graph has been drawn between intensity as well as the distance of the fringes for first fringe that is uh, for the central fringe we have maximum intensity and then the next fringe after the central fringe is dark fringe so its intensity corresponds to zero and after that we have first maxima after the central fringe for first maxima which is located at a distance of a lambda d by d the intensity is again maximum so here in this case we are seeing that all the bright fringes will have maximum intensities which can be easily distinguishable from the dark fringe and all the dark fringe will have zero intensity now let us see the value of the maximum intensity in this case so we already calculated the value of intensity which is given by a1 square plus a2 square plus 2a1 a2 cos pi so in the case of young's double slit experiment both the sources are coherent that means their amplitude becomes equal uh, here in place in this place we can take a1 equal to a2 as a so a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a uh, let us suppose that a be the intensity of either of the uh, sources so here in place of a i am taking as root i so i will be equal to in place of a1 i am taking a a square plus a square plus 2 a square cos pi for maxima cos pi is equal to 1 so the intensity that is the maximum intensity uh, will comes out to be i max is equal to 2 a square plus 2 a square which is equal to 4 a square or 4 multiplied by i 1 the intensity of either first source or second source so in the case of uh, young's double slit experiment the maximum intensity becomes four times of the intensity of either of the source so the maximum fringes whatever we will get is maximum and that maximum is given by four times of the intensity of the either of source now minimum intensity will be i minimum we have the formula again 
ए स्क्वायर ए वन स्क्वायर प्लस ए टू स्क्वायर प्लस टू ए वन ए टू कॉस पाई फॉर मिनिमम कॉस पाई विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस वन सो आई मिनिमम कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू ए वन स्क्वायर प्लस ए टू स्क्वायर माइनस टू ए वन ए टू हियर वी टूक टू कॉरिंग सोर्सेस दैट्स वाई देर एम्पलीट्यूड मीन सेम सो आई मिनिमम comes out to be i minimum is equal to a square plus a square minus 2 a square which is equal to 0 so we find that the maximum intensity is four times of the intensity of either of the source and minimum intensity is zero so that's why in this case we can able to distinguish bright and dark fringes separately that means there will be a clear contrast between bright as well as dark fringe The expression for intensity in the case of Young's double slit experiment can be I is equal to a square plus a square plus two a square cos pi. So here a square plus a square is two a square, two a square plus two a square cos pi. Two a square can be taken as a common two a square under the bracket. You have one plus cos pi, and further it can it can be expanded as two a square bracket close. For one we can write cos square pi by 2 plus sin square pi by 2 and then for cos pi uh, we can use the formula of uh, cos pi which is equal to cos square pi by 2 minus sin square pi by 2 so bracket close sin square pi by 2 sin square pi by 2 get cancel out so this to get cancel out and finally the expression for intensity in the case of Young's double slit experiment is comes out to be i is equal to 2a square multiplied by 2 cos square pi by 2 this is equal to 4a square cos square pi by 2 so this is the intensity of fringes obtained in the case of eng's double slit experiment depending upon the phase difference between the two sources so now we will see the sustained interference so the interference is said to be sustained interference if the position of bright and dark fringes do not change with respect to time that means once the fringes are formed on the screen that fringes should not change its position with respect to time so let us see the first case here we took i took two situations in the first case we are seeing that the position of bright and dark fringes remains same at t equal to 0 and after some time t also but in the case of second one we are saying at time t equal to 0 we got some bright and dark fringes and this the position of this bright and dark fringes changes after time t that means so you can see at the central fringe when time t equal to 0 we have bright fringe but this bright fringe appears to be as a dark fringe after some time t so sustained interference may be defined as the interference in which the position of bright and dark fringes do not change with respect to time now we will see some of the conditions uh, which are responsible for sustained interference here two sources must be coherent the two sources should be coherent that means it should have same frequency same wavelength must have same amplitude travel in same direction with same phase difference or constant phase difference the two waves which are superimposing must be in the state of same polarization that means if one of the wave is plane polarized then the next wave should also be plane polarized light that means their polarization state should not change if the state of polarization changes then the position of bright and dark fringe will also change with respect to time the velocity of both the source that means the coherent sources which emits the waves must have the same velocity and must travel in same direction in this case we already we already calculated the value of a beta which is print width given by lambda d divided by d if the slit width is very small then uh, we will get narrow fringes and that narrow fringes overlaps with each other because of that we cannot able to see a clear contrast between bright and dark fringes as a result of that a continuous illumination will be there so we won't get sustained interference so in order to get the sustained interference the value of d that is the fringe uh, width must be kept low and the sources which 
have to be taken in order to obtain the sustained interference must be monochromatic. If the source is chromatic, we get white band followed by color bands starting from violet and red and after that they overlaps with each other, we cannot able to distinguish. Next one is the path difference between first source as well as second source must not be greater than 30 centimeter. If the path difference is more than 30 centimeter, then it introduces a phase change with time because of that phase difference an interference pattern which is obtained on the screen will not be remains same. Now we will see the effect on the fringe width when the device is placed in a medium having the refractive index mu. Now in a free space the fringe width is given by beta 1 is equal to lambda 1 d divided by small d where lambda in 1 is the wavelength when the instrument is placed in a medium the wavelength will change in that case beta 2 is given by lambda 2 d divided by d small d. When we take the ratio of this we get beta 1 divided by beta 2 is equal to lambda 1 divided by lambda 2. Now we have to find the relation between lambda 1 and lambda 2 in terms of refractive index. The refractive index mu is given by c by v which is equal to lambda 1 divided by lambda 2. So lambda 1 can be written as lambda 2 can be written as lambda 1 divided by mu. Here the lambda 2 is equal to lambda 1 by mu we will substitute this value here we get beta 1 divided by beta 2 is equal to lambda 1 divided by lambda 1 divided by mu lambda 1 lambda 1 get cancelled out we have beta 1 divided by beta 2 is equal to mu or beta 2 is equal to beta 1 divided by mu. So when we place the instrument in a medium having the refractive index mu the fringe width get reduces. Now we will see the conservation of energy in the case of interference when two sources which produces the waves when superimposes with each other what will be the final intensity whether the intensity before superposition and after superposition will remain same or not that is what we are going to see in this case. For the case of first one before superposition the intensity of first one i1 is proportional to a1 square and for second wave i2 is proportional to a2 square. Before superposition the total intensity of the wave is given by i is equal to i1 plus i2 which is given by a1 square plus a2 square that is i is equal to a1 square plus a2 square let it be as equation 1. Now after superposition we get bright and dark bands in the case of uh, interference. So the intensity formula in the case of interference is given by a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos pi for maximum intensity cos pi that is the phase difference between first wave as well as second wave must be equal to 1 I mean uh, they should have zero phase difference or constant phase difference. So taking cos pi is equal to 1 we got i max is equal to a1 plus a2 whole square or after combining, combining this a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 using identity and the minimum intensity is obtained when cos pi is equal to minus 1 that is when the phase difference is equal to pi. 2 pi 3 pi that is integral multiplication of uh, pi. So the minimum intensity is comes out to be a1 minus a2 square whole square. Now the total intensity after superposition is given by i average is equal to maximum intensity plus minimum intensity divided by 2 that is two intensities we have one is for bright fringe another for dark fringe we have to take mean of these together in order to find out the total intensity. So uh, the maximum intensity is given by a1 plus a2 whole square and the minimum intensity is a1 minus a2 square. Expansion of uh, this and this one and after cancellation we got a1 square plus a2 square divided by 2 multiplied by 2 or 2 to get cancelled out and finally the average intensity of uh, after superposition is comes out to be a1 square plus a2 square. When we compare equation 1 and 2 we got that we get that both the intensities are same which verifies the conservation of energy. That means energy is neither loss itself or nor creating but only redistribution is taking place. After redistribution interference fringes will be formed or we find that intensity before superposition and after superposition both are same. This 
explains the law of conservation of energy. So these are the few topics we saw on today and we will see the next topics in our next class. Thank you.